The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe, and welcome to The Wheat School. Today I'm down at Ridgetown, Ontario, Ridgetown Campus, University of Guelph, catching up with Associate Professor Dr. Dave Hooker. Sir, how's it going? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. It's a little bit bright out here, beautiful sunny day. Yeah. I am sorry about the white balance <laughs> that you had to do on your camera oh. because of, uh, you know, the top. Of I, my don't, head. I don't know. I see a beautiful <laughs> tan here. And uh, what I also see here is the, the site of the Ontario Cereal Crop Committee trials. Um, yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are. Um, we've got a cover crop here now, but this was one of the sites for the trials. Um, talk about, I, I guess, the trials overall, Dave. Give us a snapshot about, I guess, the number of varieties and, you know, the scope of the trials. Yeah, the varieties, we have about 50 varieties every year, and the, fl the number fluctuates um, a little bit from year to year, depending on some varieties that aren't for sale anymore uh, by seed companies and other varieties. The exciting part are new varieties, and the cereal crop committee um, decides like what new varieties um, would move the bar forward in terms of cereal crop production, whether it be wheat, barley, oats. Those new varieties have to meet some certain criteria in order to move that bar forward, so it's very exciting to see these some new good, very good new varieties uh, come on board and they are performing quite well yeah. this year. Hey, I want to talk about one aspect of this and that is I guess the uh, performance of fungicides, uh, specifically obviously in wheat and uh, you do um, non-fungicide and fungicide. Talk about the strategy there. Yeah, so variety selection, there's a lot of variables to go with, that goes with variety selection. So we, we evaluate different varieties. Farmers want to choose mainly like high yielding varieties. But in order to put a high yielding variety in the field, of course we want to manage it. We deploy best management practices to manage that variety, you know, according to um, it's whatever potential it has. We want to unlock the genetic potential of a lot of these varieties in the field. And so, for example, if a, if a disease set in, a foliar disease, a farmer wouldn't say, well, I'm just going to ignore that and uh, ignore the disease because that would, of course, result probably in severe yield penalties. But that kind of confuses the variety selection side of things. If we do that strategy here, at the when we compare different varieties, we're putting some varieties at a disadvantage compared to others because we're not doing these best management practices in the field. If a disease comes in, uh, a best management practice like stripe rust this past year, we need to get out there with a fungicide to control the stripe rust before it gets away on us. Mm. And if we don't do that in variety of trials, we're putting a, some varieties at least mm. at an incredible disadvantage. I want to talk about some of the results that you had this year. Now overall, um, across all your sites, um, fungicides versus non-fungicide, a 12 to 13 bushel yield advantage. Um, we had some stripe rust this year. I mean, what does that number tell you about, I guess, fungicide performance on wheat? Yeah, 12 to 13 bushel per acre advantage, and that is average. And that is average across areas one and two. So we have, you know, I think, about five or six intensive trials that we have where we're comparing wheat varieties and with and without fungicide. So combine all of those trials together, all of the variety averages, we're, aver we're averaging around 12 to 13 bushel per acre. But when we look at individual varieties, we see a huge response from no fungicide response to upwards to 40 bushel per acre response. And that's kind of what we saw this year. This year was a year, it was quite a disease year. We had lots of moisture around, fairly cool, especially for stripe rust and stripe rust did come in and really set some varieties back those varieties that were susceptible to stripe rust. Yeah. Now you mentioned that as well that I mean we, we've got susceptible varieties. Um, we can get you know um, up to a 40 bushel you know difference when it comes to fungicides, but sometimes you see no response at all. Yeah, no response on some varieties, and which is good. It's good to know some varieties do not respond to a fungicide. And when we dig into the data a little bit, we can see those varieties 
most often have a lower disease in them. And the first thing, um, I guess strategy, the first layer to look at when selecting the best variety, of course is the yield, but then we want to know other characteristics like disease susceptibility or tolerance or resistance to a disease. And some varieties have good tolerance or resistant to some diseases. And that is good, especially if you don't want to spray a fungicide, like is fine, maybe you should select you know, the best resistant variety. But other varieties have a higher yield potential, may have a higher yield potential, but maybe they're a little bit weak on a disease. And that's the very, very big, I guess, challenge for wheat producers is that something may yield very good, but it may be a little bit weak on the disease. And that's where maybe an additional layer of management might come in and maybe a fungicide application would be warranted if disease does set in. Final question, Dave, and that is, you know, what do we do? Um, what can we learn from the data that comes out of the committee reports as we, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a bit late to make decisions on varieties now, but it can tell us about, you know, what we should be doing from uh, genetic selection and, you know, our strategies next spring on fungicide. Yeah, so I really like the intensive trials that the OCCC put together. No fungicide variety comparisons, no fungicide variety comparisons with fungicides. I think the, 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 um, the worst thing that we can do is rely too much on fungicides. And so that no fungicide column is important because if I see varieties that are doing well without a fungicide, you know, that is a check mark in my book. But then I look at other varieties that are yielding even more with a fungicide, and those varieties deserve a check mark as well. Mm -hmm. Especially when we get a year like this year, we know that some varieties are very susceptible to, to for instance, stripe rust. Yeah, and if it does not do very well without fungicide, I don't place much emphasis on that. But if it is doing, if it's at the top of the list, with a fungicide application, um, that variety would be um, valuable to me. Yeah. And but I would need to make sure if I do plant that variety, that means that if it. I look at look at that disease susceptibility, I better be out in my field and uh, make sure that my pencil is sharp and looking for that disease in order to trigger a fungicide application. Awesome. Hey, some great insights, Dave. I uh, always appreciate your work and with the committee and all the committee. Um, great to have you on the the Wheat School. Appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks. Good to be here.